It's a studyhall.tested.com, which we film every Monday, 9 p.m. Eastern. I'm the real Tom Rose. I'm one of the co-founders of Testiv, which is an online prep tool that you can use for all of your prepping needs. I'm also a professional teacher and a professional writer. I'm going to be talking to you about verb tense today, so those are my credentials. Um, so let's get right into it. Verb tense. Um, first of all, it's 32%. This is one of the things I discovered after last study hall as I was going through our database, and I discovered 32% of all the writing questions on the SAT um, have verb tense issues. It's even more if you include um, subject-verb agreement, which we also consider to be a verb issue. It still stays up at 32% even if you just look at verb tense, so not even subject-verb agreement. This is just tense. So it's almost a third deal with tense. It is therefore the most frequent error type in all of writing, so it's a very high, um, very high value error. How do you get better at it? The short of it is, number one, understand the six critical tenses on the SAT. So there are many, many, many tenses in English language, but you don't have to understand them all. Number two, know the three SAT verb rules, the things that are going to govern whether verbs are used correctly or not on the SAT. And lastly, spot splits in verb tense. So when you're dealing with um, um, sentence problems on the test, you want to definitely be spotting when you're dealing with verb tense. All right, here are the verb rules in short. We're going to be referencing these three times during, during the study hall, but these are the ones that you're going to want to internalize. First of all, being. Being is not a verb and should not be used as a verb. Um, being is used um, as a noun. So for example, you might say, um, he is a very strange being. But what you wouldn't want to say is, Dave is being silly. All right, so and if you, there are no correct questions on the there's no correct questions in the entire blue book that have being as a correct um, as a correct answer. So if you see that, that's a fast eliminate. Um, two, the word meaning. Um, sorry, not the word meaning. The concept of meaning, which is you need to use verb tenses that correctly represent the author's meaning. Um, this is a very very common error type on verb tense, and what you'll find is that the author will use a word, use a verb tense that just doesn't make sense. So the author maybe is clearly talking about in the present but we use either past or future tense, for example. That would create a meaning error. And um, lastly, simplicity. So um, what you want to do is only use a complex verb tense, such as past perfect, um, if you have to. If you don't have to, you want to stick with something simple, like simple past. And I'll show you examples of all these things in just a moment. Um, now, the number of tenses in English uh, depending on who you ask, this is the bad news, there are 6 or 12 or 2 or 21 different tenses in American English. So the numbers are varied, and not only, do, not only are they varied, but they're quite high in some cases. So that's bad news if you're trying to master all of the verb tenses. However, the good news here is that the SA, being a master of verb tense on the SAT requires mastery of only 6 verb tenses. So let's talk about what 6 of those are. And, and how to get them under control. So here are the verb tenses that matter um, on the SAT. And I've put the tenses in quotes here um, because the very first one on the list, the infinitive, is actually not a tense um, in the strict sense of the word. Um, infinitive, here's an example of it, to see. Um, this is what you will find in the dictionary if you look up um, see as a verb. You'll find the entry to see. This is kind of, think of the most vanilla version of a verb. Um, and what, is, like, how, what does it mean if you use the infinitive form of a verb? So if you put to see in a sentence. Well, that form is actually not a verb at all. When you are writing and you use the words to see, you're actually using them as either a noun, adjective, or adverb. So I'm putting it in here as a verb tense because it is a, one of the forms that you will find um, verbs in. But it's actually, if you really parse out the part of speech, this is actually not being used as a verb. So these can be a little confusing sometimes. Um, luckily, there's only one way to conjugate them, which is you put the word to in front of the naked form of the verb, to see. OK, then you've got your present tense, um, which is something that happens now or is true now. So if you say, I see, that's something that is truly happening right now. Um, past, I saw, is something that happened and is now done. So the seeing occurred in the past and is now over. Future, will see. Is something that would happen in the future. So if you say, I will see, it means seeing will occur later than now in time. Then you've got the present progressive, so seeing. 
If you say, I am seeing, what that means is that something is happening right now and it is continuing to occur. So it's seeing, which is happening ongoing. And you've got your, this is your complex tense, past perfect. Um, an example of that is had seen. This is perhaps the most confusing tense that we have up here. Um, and so what the meaning of past perfect is, is something, you would use past perfect to refer to something that happened before something else in the sentence that happened in the past tense. I'll show you an example of this in just a moment because it's extra confusing. What about present perfect? You know, Danny, I, I considered including present perfect on this list and I cut it because I couldn't find an example of a sentence um, in the blue book that had a present perfect where you needed to understand present perfect in, in order to get it right. So in all the examples that I looked at before when I was making this today, the, um, there were pre plenty of present perfect tenses used, but you didn't need to understand what was going on. So the errors were always in past perfect or they were in some other verb tense. Um, I'd be open to putting that back in if the SAT starts to emphasize that more. Uh, but that one was right on the fence. So I almost had seven and I almost had present perfect. Um, so if you guys are worried about it or you start seeing it come up more, you can always just look up present perfect. Um, which is another, which is another tense, which is, you know, which is on the fence in, in terms of priority. Yeah, when I say blue book, sorry, I'm referring to the College Board Official SAT Study Guide, uh, which I think of as sort of like the compendium of legitimate, authentic SAT questions. So when I say like, oh, I've checked the whole blue book and verb tense come up in 32% of cases, that's a pretty rigorous analysis. And that's 10, that's 10 retired SATs. Um, okay, so here's a how-to on past perfect. Um, past perfect is the conjugation. Imagine a timeline here. And there's three time periods in the timeline. There's, there's the present, which is where the author is currently sitting. There's something that happened in the past. And there's something that happened even before that. And the... Uh, the conjugations that you use in all three of these cases are in the present you would or in the you know where the author is currently sitting you would use present tense um, if you're talking about something that happened in the past you use simple past tense and if you're talking about something that happened even before something that happened in the past then you use um, then you use the past perfect that this is the past perfect over here on this leftmost column um, the good news with past perfect, the bad news with past perfect, it's a little complicated because you actually have to parse out, okay, like how many things are happening in the sentence? What's the time relationship of them? The good news is there's only one way to conjugate past perfect, um, which is uh, you put the word had in front of the past participle. So anytime you see the word had, if it's part of a verb tense, that's past perfect. Um, right, so here's I had been going to the store, et cetera. But then I stopped. Uh, okay, so there's some questions in the chat window about that list of verb tenses that were up there. You will see tons and tons and tons of different verb tenses on the SAT. Many, many more than were on that list. What will not happen is you will not be um, forced to correct grammar, turning around an issue which is not on that list. And when I say you will not be, what I mean is you will not be in 95% of the cases. So there may be a tiny minority of situations that are not covered by that list. But that list covers the vast majority. Um, and that's why I recommend that you study and, and make an effort to become a master of the six verb tenses that are on that list. Because those are the ones that are the, that is the block and tackle basic um, skills that you need to have in order to really excel at the test. The next step up is, okay, you have to understand everything and that takes forever and the marginal benefit of it is tiny. Um, so better to focus on that list. Um, and there is another chance that other things could be on there. And also the test does change over time. So there might be a situation where you get a new tense on the test. And what I can offer you there is you're the first, like, yes, that's catching you off guard, but it's also catching every other student in the country off guard also because um, because it's new and there's a, like, we can't predict the future perfectly, of course. Okay. So let's, um, go over what's wrong here. Um, 
Here's an example of a sentence. Dave was being silly. What's wrong there? Yeah, don't use being as a verb. Here we have the word being used as a verb, which we all commonly do in spoken English. So this is just a common, commonly made and used error. Um, to fix this, and I see a bunch of you suggesting fixes. Um, Dave was silly. This is what Scott sent in, which is great. Dave was silly. I, up here on the slide, I have Dave was acting silly, which is also a potential fix. The rule here, being should not be used as a verb, only as a noun. So if you see being used as a verb, go ahead and eliminate there. Um, what is wrong here? Um, yesterday, I will go to the store. Yeah, so you're sending there's like there's a tense meaning doesn't match. So the author by saying yesterday is telegraphing um, his or her perspective, which is that this happened in the past. And then the author uses I will go, and that's future tense. So there's a mismatch there, and that's a meaning problem. To correct it, we need to go to something like I went, which would be past. Yesterday I went to the store, and then that would be fixed. The rule here, use the verb that matches the intended meaning of the sentence. So will go does not match the meaning of the sentence. There's a question that flew by in the chat window which will, about the last one, which is silly. Is silly an adverb? In that sentence, in the last one, Dave is being silly. The word silly is actually an adjective. Um, sorry, when Dave is, if I say Dave is being silly, um, that's an adjective. If I say Dave, let me type this in the chat window. This is confusing. If I say Dave is being silly, I think the author's intent there is to use silly as an adjective. And this is a lot like Scott's. Scott was saying, Scott's fix was Dave was silly. So in, in Scott's suggestion, which I just typed in the chat window, Dave was silly. Silly is being used as an adjective. It's like saying Dave was tall, Dave was fat, Dave was yellow. In my example, when I say Dave was acting silly, silly is now an adverb. Because silly is describing the way Dave was acting. So it's modifying acting, which is a verb, so that's an adverb. So depending on how you link up that word, it could be an adverb or an adjective. Yeah, and somebody now is calling the question, what is the adverb form of silly? Which I don't think is sillily. So I think, I think silly is the adverb form of silly. Uh, no, so to go back, is Dave being silly correct? No, if you have being used as a verb, that's incorrect. Sorry, I didn't mean to call that into question. Let's go back and hit that again. If you have, I'll draw it on here. If you have the word being used here as an, this is a verb, or this is the author's in, attempt at using being as a verb, that is wrong. There's just a question in the chat window about, whether silly was an adverb or an adjective, so I wanted to address that. Okay, third one. Um, what is wrong here? I had never seen such a hairy coconut. Yeah, so this one, you're, you're correctly identifying that had is the problem here. Um, this is actually a complex tense. This is had never, is I had never seen, that is the past perfect, which is not what we want in this case. Um, so here, if we fix it, you could say, I have never seen such a hairy coconut. So this is now the present perfect. Um, or here's another one, I, this, is a, this is a fix that continues to use past perfect, but now it uses it correctly. I had never seen such a hairy coconut before I went to Palmdale, California. So notice what makes this correct. So we talked before about uh, past perfect. In order to make that correct, what you need to do is you need to be referring to something that happened in the past, in the way past, before something that else that happened in the simple past. So went is a past tense thing, right? That happened in the simple past. 
And before that, the author's saying um, he or she had never seen such a hairy coconut. Right? So the, having, the, the state of not having seen such a hairy coconut, that occurred before the author went to Palmdale, California, and that was in the past. So this is a correct use of past perfect. So one way to fix it is to get rid of the complex tense as we have here. Another way is to uh, add in a past tense thing. So now the, that tense, now the past perfect is warranted. Can being be a gerund? Uh, Marissa, give me a sentence where being is used as a gerund. I like being, or um, so gerund is a is a is a word that ends in ing that's used as a noun. So um, I I'll type one into the chat window. I like running. Running here is not a, is not a verb. In that sentence, running is a noun. Right, saying like I like pickles, noun. I like running, noun. So if you have a if you have an ing word that's used as a noun, that's called, we have a word for that which is gerund. Caroline is saying I'm still confused about why I had never seen such a is correct. So so Caroline, so the um, the reason I let's talk actually about why the top one is incorrect. So the top one said I had never seen such a hairy coconut. This tense, and let me draw around it. So had, here's the conjugation is had seen, these are linked. Had seen, that's past perfect. That tense, past perfect, is only correctly used when it's describing something that happened before something that else that also happened in the past. So for example, there's nothing else that happens. There's no other verb in the sentence that is in the past tense. Right? So something else would need to happen in order to make that tense warranted. Down here in this version, in the second fix, that is occurring. We have, I had never seen such a hairy coconut. That's the way past. And then something else happens after that, which is, I went to Palmdale, California. Now that's happening later in time than the never having seen a hairy coconut, but before the present. So it's the going to Palmdale, that happened in the past. So now the past perfect is warranted. So that's why the second one is correct. Sounds, Caroline, I'm, I'm guessing by the O oh, that that answered your question. Let me know if it did not. Okay. Word, uh, rule here that we're referring back to is um, only use complex tenses such as past perfect when you need to. If you don't need to use it, um, it's wrong to use it because it conveys a meaning that uh, it doesn't make sense anymore. Uh, so here's another, oh, we already did this one. Okay, so let's go over a quick verb tense process. Um, number one, spot a verb tense split. By split, what I mean is you find something. Um, if you're doing um, improving sentences, for example, you find multiple answer choices that have different verb tenses in them. So like if one of them had had gone, one of them has went, one of them has will go, that's a red flag to you that, oh, hey, maybe I'm dealing with a verb tense issue here. Two, um, understand the intended meaning of the sentence. So make sure that you know what the author is trying to say um, before you start to correct that verb. And then lastly, evaluate using the three, I should say three verb tense rules. Right? So evaluate the three verb tense rules. And that's your process. So let's do a couple of examples here. And as always, type your answers into the chat window but don't send them, so don't press enter. 
and we'll all send them in at the same time and I'll cue you to do that. That way we won't have spoilers. Okay, go ahead and send your answers in. And let's see, so I'm getting a lot of answers for um, choice C, and you can see that there is a verb in there. That's good. That's good news since today's verb day. So we have he seeks out. And uh, does anybody know why this is wrong? So I saw a couple of those come in earlier. Yeah, Scott is saying sought out. And what would be the change there if we change it to sought? That would be changing it to past tense, right? And what makes you think it should be past tense? Yeah, because of learned. It says whenever he learned in the past tense, a new method in art class, he, and then this should match learned. And the reason why it needs to match learned is because of the meaning of it. If the author's intent is to say, and this is where you have to use judgment, right? It's not obvious structurally. So I'm not saying all verbs always have to match everything all the time. But the author is saying that something happened in the past. Whenever this thing happened, it triggered another thing to also happen in the past. So whenever he learned, he also sought out the work of sculptors who had used it. And the author even uh, on the test, they layer on pretty thick. They say, in the past, <laughs> um, just in case you're confused about when this should occur. So he learned and sought. Oh, good question. So why is D not wrong? Great question. So this is had used it is an example of what tense? It wraps on the line, so I'll put an arrow behind both. That's past perfect. So how do we know whether past perfect is used correctly? Well, we need to evaluate the timeline. So when does the using, let's actually draw out the timeline. So we've got authors using right that's the first thing that happened then what's next and the timeline we've got this guy doing learned and sought right and we're still not done. There's still yet another time period, which is the present. We have author. So the author's sitting out in the present. We have, in the past tense, we have this guy learning and seeking. But even before that, in a time before time, we've got the sculptors had used this technique in the past. So this is correct. Um, what do you mean, where does referred go, Scott? Oh, where in the timeline? Um, learn, uh, referred is also here. In this particular sentence, you can see that there's like, Scott is actually doing a lot of things in the past. And the author in a lot of ways is, is, basically, um, is basically batching up all of these things. Sorry, I'm trying to point to this in a circle, but the author is basically batching up all of these things, the learned, sought, and referred, and saying those all happen in like roughly the same kind of like past tense zone. And then something happened like real way before, and that was the sculptors used this technique in the way past. But this diagram here is like is pretty interesting. You can see how you know complicated the tenses might be in a sentence, and how you have to understand what's going on in order for you to evaluate. You know, was something past perfect used correctly? And you can see why it's really important because you need to avoid picking D. So you need to know how to use past perfect.
All right, here's an example, another one. Same rules, type your answer in the chat, but don't send it. Okay, go ahead and send in your answers. I'm getting a lot of C's. So why, how did you eliminate that? How did you eliminate A, B, D, and E? What was wrong in it? Okay, can't use being as a verb. So surface is being, being, being. All right, excellent. So then that effectively gets rid of E, D, and A. And then we're left with what? B and C. They both have the same to study. Yeah, B is a little is pretty wonky. Um, um, this is the problem here. As a result of the icy surface, then it says mainly is. This is an incorrect modifier, is how I would label this. Um, how would you want to say? So if you wanted to correctly say that the icy surface mainly is difficult to penetrate. How would you introduce that modifier? Commas are a good start, but you need something else too. Yeah, one way Rachel is saying is like, you could just get rid of the commas. Um, you still would need to add another word though. You need to say something like, the icy surface that mainly is which or Fevin is saying which is mainly so you need a word to create that modifier to connect the modifier to icy surface if you don't want to use that connecting word like which or that you could put the modifier before icy surface you could say as a result of the uh, impenetrable icy surface and that would also work but we don't have either of those cases so let's get rid of B for modifier reasons we got rid of A, D, and E for the verb reason, and that just leaves C in this case. All right, we'll put another one up. Okay, go ahead and send your answers in. Okay, and tell me why. Why so why did you all pick C? I'll flag that one as the as the candidate. 
So no need for has. So here in the original sense, we have has disproved. And what, what's wrong with that? Yeah, you need to match showed. So showed is past tense. And we need to match that. Uh, why do we need to match it? Again, not because of a mystical structural verb tense requirement. It's because of the meaning of the sentence. So the author is trying to say that this doctor disproved a theory when, so, so this thing was triggered when this other thing was triggered. Right, so those need to both be past. So has disproved is not simple past. Um, this is actually the present perfect tense that people were asking about earlier. You don't need to completely understand present perfect, but you do need to know that this is not simple past tense, right? And simple past is what we want in order to match showed. So she disproved it. This, what is B? What tense is that? This is a having is that it's the present progressive. This is disproved as past. The case, the condition, the current ongoing condition of her disproved something, which would be okay as the sentence, Dr. Uh, Chen Xiong having disproved a widely accepted theory. And then you would, the problem is uh, this, uh, this actually creates a modifier for the doctor. Which doctor? It's the doctor who, having disproved a widely accepted theory of physics when she showed that identical nuclear particles do not always act alike, ate a sandwich. So you, you still need another verb. All of this is, becomes a modifier if you start with having disproved. So B is out. Watch the modifier um, session if you're unsure about that. We talked about why A was out. It's not past tense. D and E have the same problem, not past tense. This is disproves present. This is disproving present progressive. Yeah, that was last week. You can also go to www.tesla.com and create an account and you can actually go just go download the modifier study hall now. All right, one more. All right, go ahead and send in your answers. If you've already started doing, it's okay. Um, okay, so Marissa's already pointing out, you need to identify that it's Sheila who noticed. What type of error is that? Um, that's a pronoun error, right? So she doesn't work because it's not clear whether we're talking about Lucy or Sheila, right? That's an ambiguous pronoun. So that gets rid of A and B. Today's not really pronoun day, so let's just like get rid of those, and I don't want to talk too much about it. If you want to see more on pronouns, go, go look at the pronoun lecture. Uh, between C, D, and E, however, we have Sheila, um, and so there is no pronoun. Uh, but the question is, do we want has noticed, um, had noticed, or just noticed? And then on the downstream of that even, you've got the menu changed, changing, or had changed. So let's look at what let's look at the timeline. So we have complicated tenses in here. So let's look at the timeline. Um, what happened furthest back in time? What is the what is the oldest thing that happened in this story? Yeah, we've got the ch uh, the menu changed. 
right? So we've got um, had changed. Okay, what's what's next in the timeline? We've got visited. What else? What else happened in the in the past tense? Noticed. And then the author is up here in the present tense. So this is the timeline. So the tenses that you want to use, um, I actually wrote them out in the timeline correctly how you'd want to use them. But for the changing, which is the oldest thing that happened, you want to use past perfect. Then for the visiting and the noticing, because those happen in the simple past, they happened later, you want to use simple past. And then you have the author in the present. Scott, yeah, generally speaking, the author is always in the present. Um, there are some super complicated ways of making that not true, um, but they basically don't come up on the SAT. But you could imagine really complicated writing, you know, out in the real world where somebody might come up with a sentence structure where the author suddenly is in the future or something. Yeah, like a flashback. Um, Okay, so we want visited and noticed. So has noticed and had noticed, those don't work. We want noticed. So let's get rid of C and D. So you can already pick E, but just to put the nail in the coffin, let's look at the changed verb as well. So changed works. Um, changing. Does changing work? Let's see. They noticed that the menu, Sheila, let's, let's assume that they fixed the had noticed thing here. So say Sheila noticed the menu changing and that their favorite dish was no longer offered. So that, that would not work. If it just started with notice the menu, if it stopped with notice the menu changing, that would work. But you can't have notice the menu changing and that their favorite dish is no longer offered. Because changing is present progressive, so you can't say and another thing that's not present progressive too. Okay, so, so you, in C you have Sheila has noticed, let's again say they fixed that. Sheila noticed that the menu changed and that their famous dish was no longer offered. So this would be pretty ambiguous. This is something that the test would not ask you to, to choose between. So they wouldn't give you a choice between um, two simple past and a simple past and a past perfect, that would be too hard of a choice. Um, so you won't be out, you won't be faced with that with that challenge. Um, that's a bit of a stylistic decision. What it what is important is that you know that when past perfect is used, whether it's correct or not. So in this case, it is correct to have had had changed. Okay, I think technically it's needed to have the had, but a lot of people use um, two past tense to refer to something that happened even earlier. And it's okay. Um, Marissa, does offered even matter? Um, uh, so yes, it does matter in the sense that um, it's 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 bucketed up in the simple past with visited, noticed, um, and we have was not offered. So it matters in that sense that it helps establish the timing as well. And that's, that's yet another indicator um, of what time period these, all these events are taking. Okay, if you'd like more practice, you can always go to www.testive.com. We have free questions up there. And or if you'd like to speak with a coach, you can work one-on-one -on -one with one of our 99 percentile coaches um, who are standing by to help you if you have any challenges. I'd like to acknowledge a bunch of people who helped us put this together. Miro, Miro Kaz, Kazakaf, Jars, Jackson, Havid, Noel, Janet, The Machine, Helperson, David, Pikachu, Chippendale, Lee, The Chemist, Akamondo, Shonak, Coffee is for Closers, Patel, Morella, Brazil, Crespi, David, Chubby Shorts, High Song, Charles, Kitten, Smuggler, Reese, Abby, The Saint, Ingolstead, Will, The Institute, Eaton, Meg, Smiles, Butler, Samantha, Swood, Wood, Sophie, Let Your Freak Flag Fly, Heller, and John, The Lawyer, The Plant, Thank you all. Um, this has been studyhall.testive.com.
which is 9 p.m. Eastern. I'm the real Tom Rose. Thank you all for coming. If you'd like a coach, you can try a free 30-minute session today. Just go to scheduler.testive.com. Thank you.